Senator Josh Hawley, who seems to be eyeing a presidential run in 2024, has decided to launch a gross and incredibly dishonest attack against Biden's Supreme Court nominee, Kentanji Brown Jackson. Now, it's really a historic event here because she is the first African American judge to be, you know, considered for the Supreme Court. And if, of course, she's confirmed, she would be the first black female judge in the Supreme Court. But Josh Hawley has decided to launch this attack through a 17 tweet thread where he accuses her of being soft on child predators essentially. And again, before we even get to the details, we're gonna debunk what he has to say, but I wanna be abundantly clear that it is a dishonest attack where he goes out of his way to even take her out of context. So I'm gonna give you a few of the tweets. He says, I've been researching the record of Judge Jackson Brown, reading her opinions, articles, interviews, and speeches. I've noticed an alarming pattern when it comes to Judge Jackson's treatment of sex offenders, especially those preying on children. Notably, Josh Hawley was not a vocal opponent of Alabama's Roy Moore, who was accused by several women of molesting them when they were teenagers. Not a peep, not a peep from Josh Hawley on that. Instead, he has decided to use this as a political opportunity to unfairly attack a judge and take her out of context. He says that Judge Jackson has a pattern of letting child porn offenders off the hook for their appalling crimes, both as a judge and as a policymaker. She's been advocating for it since law school. This goes beyond soft on crime. I'm concerned that this is a record that endangers our children. Now, we're gonna debunk a lot of what he says here. Before we do though, I just wanna also mention that it's not just people on the left going after Holly for this dishonest attack. You have conservatives as well, including conservative columnist and former federal prosecutor Andrew McCarthy, who attacked Holly for what he said was a meritless accusation against Judge Brown, Judge Brown Jackson. And so before we get to the details and debunk Bunking what Holly is doing here, uh, Ida. I wanted to give you an opportunity to jump in. Um, so, black women must be tired. You yeah, know, I bet. they've got to be exhausted because the continuous attacks on black women is just egregious. You know, I, I think that we've reached the point where in um, U.S. politics that we've gone beyond the lack of shame. And it is embarrassing globally to where the lengths that some of these politicians will go. But I'm just severely concerned of what message this is sending to our children, actually, because this guy was the one that fist bumped. That was the guy with the black leather glove during the uh, the terrorist attack in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. Um, and I just think that it's gotten to the point where now you know, we've always known politics and politics can get ugly, but now it's dirty beyond measure. And if you're an American and you care anything about what America is supposed to stand for, you should be severely concerned about these people, whether they are on the right or the left, because this is concerning. And it's it's infuriating. Black women were had to feed white babies during slavery, and here we are, still, you know, bailed out these people, us during this last election. This black woman who has, you know, there are other things you can actually rightfully take issue with when it comes to her. Right. But to make stuff up is just the lowest of the low, and you can't ride with these people. And he definitely made stuff up, took her out of context, made it seem like she was, her opinions on sentencing were somehow unique or stood out compared to what what other judges believed, which was not in any way true. In fact, the former prosecutor, the conservative prosecutor that I was just referring to, who has condemned Holly here, also said that Judge. Jackson Brown, Judge Brown Jackson was actually in line. He agreed with her views on mandatory minimums. And she was very much in line with what the majority of judges believed at the time. I'm gonna give you those details in a second. But, you know, again, it was a 17 tweet thread. And I think that Glenn Kessler over at the Washington Post did a good job going tweet by tweet and debunking all of it. I'm gonna 
pick out the ones that uh, we can talk about now. We can't go through all of it, it's gonna take up the whole show. Um, so that's why I'm citing uh, Kessler, you guys should check out what he has to say. But he also writes that the picture that Holly provides is a selective one that lacks significant context. He suggests that Jackson is out of the judicial mainstream with her sentencing of child pornography defendants. But he ignores a long debate within the judicial community about whether mandatory minimums were too high. And you had judges on both sides of the political aisle agreeing that the mandatory minimums were too high. Now in one tweet, this is what Holly had written. Judge Jackson has said that some people who possess child porn are in this for either the collection or the people who are loners and find status in their participation in the community. What community would that be? The community of child exploiters? Now he made it seem like that was her entire quote. Of course, he took that completely out of context. In reality, Jackson was just asking a follow up question to a witness who had spoken of an online community. I'm gonna give you the entirety of her statement, which of course you didn't get from Holly's tweets. I was just going to say as a follow up to that, Miss McCarthy, is it your experience that this category of non sexually motivated child pornography offenders is very small? Because you had them broken out in your slide, the non sexually motivated. And that I found, and that I found just so interesting because I assumed that everyone who was involved in this kind of activity was sexually motivated. So the people who are in this for either the collection or the people who are loners and find status in their participation in the community, but would be categorized as non sexually motivated, how many are we talking about? I mean, the context is so important, but of course, he cherry picked a small portion of that statement, small portion of that question in order to make it appear as though she's somehow empathetic to child sex predators or people who are looking at and sharing child pornography. You know what that what it does though, it just it is a constant reminder that the people who are in the Republican Party believe that their constituents are idiots. And nobody insults their intelligence more than these people. Because if you told, if you saw that, and I know he saw the whole question mm -hmm. and told one of the, the interns, hey, just take this part out and put it out there. Basically, what he's saying is they'll buy it. They're gonna feed into it. They already hate her because she's a black woman, because these people are the people that hate everybody that does not look like them. They're already predisposed to QAnon type conspiracy yeah, theories absolutely. about the left, uh, you know, protecting child predators and things like yeah, that. Yeah, in addition to that, and so that it is just an insult. And I know some of you hate watch, but just think about it. They know you're not gonna go beyond this tweet and do the research and go get the information to find out what, what is really, what she really said or really did. So they, they just are now chopping up this information, this minimal stuff, the clickbait, because they know you're gonna put on a t-shirt, you're gonna take your mask off, you're not gonna get vaccinated, you're gonna roll out there and you're gonna have a fight on behalf of these talking points without knowing what's going on. And that to me is an insult, that's insulting. I mean, what I'm curious about is why didn't Josh Hawley bring up Amy Coney Barrett's relationship and you know inclusion within the Catholic Church? She's a Catholic, right? Yeah. Uh, was that problematic at all for Holly, considering all of the child sex abuse scandals that came out of the Catholic Church? Facts. Now, honestly, the left wouldn't think about that line of questioning because the left doesn't play dirty like that, okay? They might bring up what happened to Brett Kavanaugh, but Brett Kavanaugh had legitimate accusations of attempted rape against him. In this case, we're talking about a judge who did nothing wrong. We're talking about a judge who is taken out of context. Look, not to, to win any political brownie points for the, for the right, but to win political brownie points for one specific person, and that's Josh Hawley. That's right. He's just trying to appeal to QAnon conspiracy theorists, the worst elements of society who have bought into the most dangerous conspiracy theories in order to increase his chances of, of winning a presidential primary in 2024. It's just, it's incredibly gross. I wanted to give one other example, by the way. Um, 
So uh, here's one is one of his other tweets where he says, Judge Jackson has opined there may be a type of less serious child pornography offender whose motivation is not sexual, but is the challenge or to use the technology. A less serious child porn offender, he asks. Hmm. Okay, well, that's another example of her asking a question in response to testimony that she found surprising. So let me give you her question in its full context. Um, did I just read this already? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so let's go to graphic seven. I was just surprised at some testimony with respect to the motivation of offenders and that there are people who get involved in this kind of activity who may not be pedophiles, who may not be necessarily interested really in the child pornography, but have other motivations with respect to the use of the technology. And the being in that group and you know, there are lots of reasons perhaps why people might engage in this. And so I'm wondering, whether you could say that there is a that there could be a less serious child pornography offender who is engaging in this type of conduct in the group experience level because their motivation is the challenge or to use the technology they're very sophisticated technology technologically but they aren't necessarily that interested in the child pornography piece of it she's asking a question mm -hmm. to a witness in a case but again, the full context was completely left out by Josh Hawley, who by the way, is not apologetic at all hmm. for taking her out of context, lying about her, just so he can win political brownie points uh, with conspiracy not. theorists. And you know, the thing about it that people don't know, um, that the average person doesn't know, and it, it took a while for me to know, is that litigators have to ask the uncomfortable and the questions because their job is to find out what's happening in, in accordance to the law. And, and a lot of the language that is used that is not common for us who are not litigators can be very confusing to, to the average person and the average mind. And that is their job when they are in a courtroom to ask the questions that are gonna uphold the law. And so she is doing her job in this. And here he is taking her words out of context, making it something that it's not. And now it's a bunch of it's a bunch of people who have half information, don't know what's going on, are already angry because of whatever re belief that they have about what's being taken from them. And now this this just feeds it. Absolutely. And look, I think context matters in every situation. Yeah. In every situation. Um, you know, people will argue context doesn't matter. I've, I've seen arguments like that on the left as well. Absolutely. Context matters, okay? It just does. Pretending as if that doesn't matter, that the intentions of an individual who says something that you don't like doesn't matter, that is a toxic society to live in where we're needlessly going after innocent people who might be making a point that you actually agree with. And that's what Holly was doing in this particular case. In, in this effort to smear her as someone who's soft on child predators, it's disgusting. And then by the way, one other thing I wanted to quickly address is the fact that he again pretends as though she really stood out in wanting to lower the mandatory minimums. But no, that was actually a bipartisan effort by the US Sentencing Committee. So what's missing here, and this is according to Glenn Kessler's piece, is that the US Sentencing Committee is bipartisan. No more than four members of the seven member sentencing committee can be from one party. And that the recommendations that Holly criticizes were actually unanimous. One member who signed off on the report was Debney L. Friedrich, later nominated in 2017 by Donald Trump to be a federal district judge. Holly was not in the Senate then, then, but every Republican actually supported her nomination. And also a 2010 survey showed that 71% of judges said that the mandatory minimums for receipt of images were too high. So I would venture to say there were a lot of Republican judges included in that equation. But Holly left that out as well. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that 
All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.